In this video, we're going to run a three-tiered application comprised of Nginx um, on the front end to serve your static web resources, Strongloop for your RESTful interface, and MongoDB for the back end. Um, and this does say CouchDB here, but just in our example, it's going to be MongoDB. So in a traditional back end, you'd, you'd have a load balancer connected to some nodes that have ingress 8080, for example, that would comprise Nginx, maybe another VM or node that has strong loop and then uh, uh, another node that has the database on it and so you do lose a lot of, um, uh, of of resources basically because you have to scale the application by traditional means but in the swarm stack what we're going to look at is still having the load balancer on the front end but then kind of collapsing our network to just be this private network that has some VMs on it we can run the Nginx containers on any of these VMs. The ingress 8080 port will be open on all of the VMs. And then we can segregate by these overlay networks. So we can have a front end overlay network that Nginx um, and Strongloop are, are part of. And then the back end overlay network that only Strongloop and the back end database are a part of. So Nginx would not be able to talk to, um, to MongoDB, for example. So just quickly in the first step, we're going to create um, those two overlay networks for front end and back end. Then I'm just going to do a Docker network LS in order to make sure that those networks were created. As you can see, we have the three networks that we have we have created so far: the logging, the front end, and the back end network. And uh, the next step I'm going to do is to create a volume for uh, the database. So I'm just going to call that DB Data. And again, use the Rexray driver for that. And when I do Docker volume ls, we can see that I have the DB data volume created. Uh, now, the next step is actually to create the first service that will comprise our three tier application. So we'll first start up the database. Uh, since um, the uh, strong loop application depends on it, so we'll start that up first. So just execute the command Docker service create. Um, the name is going to be DB. We're going to create one replica of that. Here are the environment variables that we can pass to it. And the log driver, since we want logs to be sent to Kibana. So um, Docker has log drivers, and one of them is the Gelf uh, driver. And, um, and Logstash understands that driver, and so we can just talk to the logging network on that UDP port that we set up earlier. So if I take a look at uh, Logstash, if you recall, we we allowed ingress on port uh, 12201 on UDP. So that's what I am uh, targeting here on each of the containers. Okay. So the next thing is the mount. Um, and again, we're mounting the name volume DB data. And if I do Docker service LS, um, we can now see that the, the database has started up on worker one. And the next thing we're going to do is start our RESTful service, which is a strong loop uh, Node.js application. And again, Docker service create, creating the what we've named it the API service. Um, and here it's chosen worker two to start that up on. So fast forward the video just a little bit, um, and we see that uh, we have a running container now. And then we're going to start up the gateway service, which is our Nginx. And um, if you take a look, uh, you know the name networks that we're on, we're on the back end, front end, and logging network for the database. Um, Strong loop is going to be on the front end and logging network. And then the gateway is going to be on um, just the front end network. So it won't be able to talk to the database. And now that our application is running, we should be able to go to the Strong Loop Explorer um, in order to take a look at our RESTful services. And again, um, since we exposed the port ingress, um, uh, well, actually, in Strong Loop, we didn't. We exposed port uh, 3000 um, just to the internal overlay network. But on the gateway on the Nginx, we did expose port 8080. 
And so if I go to port 8080 on any node, worker 1, worker 2, or manager 1, I should see this Strong Loop Explorer API. And so if I go and test that, I can test the get method to get all cars, for example, in this case. There aren't any in the database yet, um, so we don't see any. But I can go ahead and I can create a sample entry. So I'll choose the model BMW. Uh, actually, model would be something other than BMW. It would be like 335, and then BMW would be the make. And the year 2016, for example. And uh, mileage is just say 10 miles. And we'll give it an ID of 1. So when I try that out, uh, you can see that the response body is 200 OK. That record was created um, in MongoDB via strong loop. And when I click Get Cars again, I get a 200, and I actually get one response back. Okay, great. So looks like our service is working. Um, we're going through Nginx, which is at port 8080, talking to Strong Loop, and on port 3000, and then Strong Loop is talking to the database um, and creating records. So now let's look at Kibana. Since we've started up these um, containers, uh, logs have been sent to Kibana. So the first time, we just need to create an index on the at timestamp field. Once we've done that, we can go to Discover. And we can go ahead and take a look at logs, um, in this case, in the last 15 minutes um, that, that have come through. So I can go ahead, and I won't go into um, much detail on Kibana. It's probably another video on its own. But uh, you can go ahead, and you can take a look at many different um, um, facets, basically, that are provided to Kibana. The container name, container ID, the image that it was created from, kind of you know, the container, what worker nodes um, are, are basically running that container. Um, so we can also go ahead and go to the dashboard, um, or first of all, we'll go to visualize, and we can choose any sort of visualization. In this case, I'll choose a pie chart um, and show you kind of what you can do. So on any of the fields that you saw in the Discover tab, you can filter on those fields to create reports. So I just choose a field host, for example. And you know maybe this report I want to see you know where logs are coming from the most. So are they coming from manager one, manager two, or or uh, sorry, manager one, worker one, or worker two in this case? So I'll just add a couple, uh, three different filters so we can split the graph into um, in, into those sections. So once I do that and click the play button up there, um, I'll see that um, you know the the percentage essentially of of where the logs are coming from based on all of the swarm nodes that I have. So, so that's just a really simple um, example of, of one of the visualizations you can do on one of the uh, on one of the facets. And you can get more complex. You can say you know um, it's on host worker one and uh, the message contains error or something. So um, you can definitely uh, create a lot of uh, a lot of cool reports in here. So I'll go ahead and just save this report, just to show you how that works. So we'll call it um, host usage breakdown, or actually maybe a better name for that would be log breakdown by host. Uh, click save, and now that's a saved visualization. And if I want to look at different visualizations in one dashboard, I can just go to the dashboard tab, click the plus button, and choose the visualization. In this case, I just have one. So I can um, expand that, and then you know you you'd be able to take a look at that you know, on a monitor or something in your in your office. All right, cool. So you can also save dashboards. Uh, let's call it my dashboard, for example. I can store the time, so I want this dashboard to come up and always show me the last 15 minutes. I can choose different time slices: 15 minutes. Uh, last four hours, last day, etc., and how often I want to auto-refresh um, the logs and the reports. All right, great. So you do see some of the logs coming in there. Um, I'll show you uh, some more logs rolling. So I'll go here and create another another entry in the database. So again, I'll just, just BMW this time, 428. 
try it again. I get a 200 success, and if I do a get, I should have two records now in the database. So, yep, here are the two records. And then if I go to Kibana, um, I should see the, those logs coming in from, uh, in this case, uh, Nginx is reporting um, that Explorer had you know a, a get request on it, basically, and a, and a post request. Okay, great. So the next thing uh, I'll just take a look at is the visualization. You can see that I have um, Nginx here on the Manager 1 node. And you can see you know, Nginx basically is, is being shown there. So, so basically Manager 1 is providing those logs.